Hello everybody and welcome to the War Room. This one is for the UFC 289 main event. For the women's bantamweight title, Amanda Nunes defending her belt against Irene Aldana. Um, I'm excited for this fight for, for a few different reasons. One, because, well, first of all, Aldana's a, a, a very clean striker. I think she's been quite a well-rounded mixed martial artist from the beginning of her career, which, well, maybe not the beginning, but certainly before her UFC career, which I'll get into in a moment. And Amanda Nunes, of course, you know, one of the greatest of all time, just such a a, a fantastic champion, trying to hold down, to hold down two weight classes, picked up a loss against uh, Pena, came back, turned it around, got the belt back in what was a uh, an outstanding performance. Um, really excited for this one. So before I get into the tail of the tape, let me give our uh, sponsors a shout out. You know I love this stuff, Athletic Greens AG1. Um, every morning, 12 ounces of water, you add your scoop in, mix it up and drink it. Your day has started off on the right foot. You've got 75 vitamins and minerals, probiotics, adaptogens, all different kinds of good stuff that is going to make you feel so much better throughout the day. It's going to improve your sleep and your mental clarity. It's going to give you that kind of buffer against the rest of your diet. If you are got a chaotic lifestyle, if you're working in the city, if you're traveling a lot, whatever it is, you need to make sure your baseline's covered, especially if you're you're looking for physical and, and or mental performance. Um, AG1 is really, really good. So these are the travel packs. If you go to uh, um, if you go to athleticgreens.com forward slash outlawed, you will get five free travel packs and a year's free supply of vitamin D and K2. D3, K2. Need it for your immune system as well as many, many other things. And of course, the travel packs make things a lot easier. Um, make sure you get on that. Fantastic stuff. Okay, right. Tail of the tape. So... The defending champion, Amanda Nunes, 22 wins and 5 losses, uh, 13 knockouts and 4 wins by submission. Irene Aldana, 14 wins and 6 losses, 8 by knockout and 3 by submission, 2 rear naked chokes and an armbar. Um, 1 inch height advantage for Aldana, 1 inch reach advantage for Nunes. Just quick focusing on, on their submissions a little bit. Um, so... Aldana's submissions, her rear naked choke submissions, of which there are two of them, became, came before the UFC. Um, she was a very prolific finisher before the UFC when she was fighting Invicta. Lots of first round finishers. She had a couple of tough fights, but then if you look back at those names, one of them is Larissa Pacheco, <laughs> who's just uh, become the uh, PFL um, uh, champion. She is an absolute monster, and that was a third round finish for Pacheco. Um but you can imagine how how uh, how much of a good fight that was. And then the Tonya Avenger fight, which is a good fight, definitely worth going to watch. Uh, Invicta 13, um, Tonya Avenger uh, stopped Irene Aldana in the full, fourth round, but it was a hell of a fight. And, and again, uh, uh, Tonya Avenger is another really, really tough test. But then you look at everybody else, they were all first round finishers. Knees and punches, knee to the body, spinning wheel kick to the body, um, then you've got two rear naked chokes against Peggy Morgan and uh, Colleen Schneider, and then two TKO finishes against Jessamine Duke and Van Duen. Um, the Colleen Schneider one in particular was really nice because it was so aggressive. She pushed forward aggressively behind a, a flurry. Um, Schneider kind of stumbled against the fence, and as she got back to her feet, she got hit with a left hook. She uh, tried to clinch and was pushed away, and then Aldana just chased her and jumped up her back and, and, and finished with a rear naked choke. And then against Jessamine Duke, it was, it was again, similar kind of flurry, moving her back up against the fence, but this time it was really clean, crisp uh, uh, body shot that really did the damage. Um, she had... TKO finishes from really good kicking and punching, and she had submission finishes from really good rear naked chokes. Then she joined the UFC and she stumbled a bit. She got Leslie Smith, who put her under loads of pressure in her UFC debut. She lost that one by unanimous decision, even though it was a fight of the night. And and there were there were certain things in that performance I thought to myself, well, she's going to struggle against the pressure that she's going to be put under against these fighters. Some of the things that she was doing, like her slipping head from side to side was was problematic with head kicks that Leslie Smith was throwing. And then she had another really difficult fight, a, a split decision loss against Chukagian. So she came into the UFC under, you know, well, came in under ideal circumstances with her, with her, her performances so far, but then had two really, really tough tests. Um, and there were certain things in both of those fights that I think will be will be relevant in the fight against Nunes. Certain things that um, Leslie Smith and Chikagian did well that I think Nunes could could capitalize on. Um, but then 
uh, Aldana was able to turn it around. She had a three-fight win streak after that, so she's got uh, Talita Bernardo showed really good hands, really good takedown defense in that fight, and then put it over was was just a war. And th this is where we start to see Aldana using her low kicks a bit more because put it over was moving forward quite aggressively, her nose got busted, and she just didn't really seem to want to slow down. And Aldana was having to move and 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 slip and be quite defensive. But she was she was very good at intercepting Pudilova's step or the step to punch with low kick. She kept buckling that lead leg. And of course, Aldana's gonna expect to be under pressure against Amanda Nunes. Now it's either it's either a lot of pressure, as we've seen Nunes do before against, say, uh um Ronda Rousey, for example, and then we've got the less pressure but just as dangerous like the Holly Holm fight. So she can get right in your face. She can be on the back foot dealing with Cyborg coming against her, uh, coming up against her, throwing big power punches off the back foot. But she can also kind of hang back and wait and pick her shots like she did against Holly Holm. And, and Aldana's got to kind of, she's got to have a game plan for each versions of these, th these uh, styles that Amanda Nunes can bring to the table. And then you add in the most recent Amanda Nunes that we've seen where she can now fight Southpaw and she's got a wicked check right hook. And then that's a whole other layer that you're adding on to the, the problem that is Amanda Nunes. And specifically for Rina Aldana, I feel like she's, if you look at fights where she's where she's been up against Southpaws, of course, the, the Holly Holm fight was 25 minutes of a just basically kind of following Holly Holm in a circle. And the moments where Macy Chasson switched to Southpaw, there were times where she didn't look quite as comfortable. You know, one thing that, that uh, Aldana does do really well is delivers her left hook. And we've seen it, um, the gazelle hook against Caitlin Vera. We've seen her use left hooks to the body against Vanessa Mello and against uh, Yana Santos. And the Yana Santos fight was was really nice because she dug her to the body and brought the arm down. So next time she threw the punch, Kunitskaya th Kunitskaya. Santos thought it was going to the body and she pulled her elbow down to open up the, the head. Like that, that delivery of the left hook's really, really useful. But unless she can adapt it and start us using it like the check hook that Nunes was using against Pena she might feel uncomfortable when, when Nunes goes southpaw. Oh, I just feel like I've taught loads. Um, if, if I'm Nunes, I'm looking at walking Aldana down and taking space away from as much as I can. Aldana does have a tendency to over move because she has got good footwork. If you watch her against Betch Cohea when Betch is kind of walking her down a little bit, Aldana's doing a lot of movement backwards and forwards. And, and of course it's, it's beneficial because it makes her less easy to hit, less easy to predict. Um, the constant motion as well makes her opponents have to keep adjusting to her because she's the one leading the dance. But then over 25 minutes, especially if Amanda's uh, started to, you know, maybe work the legs or work the body a little bit, then Aldana might start to find that she's slowing down a little bit. And that's what you don't want against Nunes because we know that she can work incredibly hard for 25 minutes. We know that she can tough it out and, and, and battle and like... Again, I'll go back to it. That last performance against Pena was really, really impressive because we saw an adaptation in her striking range where she switched to southpaw and she was check hooking and she was she was making uh, uh, Pena feel very, very uncomfortable in that fight. And then we saw her switch it up and start landing takedowns and, and a variety of takedowns as well. But see, with Nunes, we've seen a lot of kind of body lock uh, twisting takedowns. What we saw in the Pena fight was just a drive. She was just pulling the knee close to her and just driving through on the hip all the way across the fence. These are these are the kind of takedowns that uh, Aldan is going to struggle with. Anything that's got the kind of horsepower that, that Nunes can put into a takedown, Aldan is going to struggle with. And the reality is Aldan has got good takedown offense. I know that it's slightly different on UFC stats, uh, 82 and 81% in favor of Nunes by 1%, but... If you actually drill down into the, into the statistics, I'm sure it's 81.8 for Nunes, which has been rounded up to 82, and 81.3 for Aldana, which has been rounded down to 81. But Aldana's had to defend 54 takedowns compared to Nunes defending 34. And the reason why Nunes has had to defend less takedowns is because she scored a lot more takedowns. 33 takedowns for Nunes, two for Aldana. Um... So again, you look into these statistics and you can start kind of seeing, okay, well, it, it, it's it's more evident that there are a variety of different ways that Nunes can win this one. For, for Aldana, I feel like she's either got to be 
pushing forward behind boxing range, working low kicks, or moving back behind boxing range, working low kicks. And I feel like she has to try and maintain that pretty straightforward game plan as much as she can. I don't think it's worth her trying to tangle up with Nunez and take her down. I think that would be a massive waste of energy, and I feel like she would probably be outmatched if it hit the floor. Um, however, <laughs> when you're Nunez, you can go, okay, well, I can push forward and I can beat you up at close range, which you know is a risk against anybody, of course. But Nunez tends to win the the uh, the, the power exchange in those in those circumstances. Or she can play on the outside like she did against Holly Holm, work the legs, work the body. Like the front kick to the midsection that she used against Shayna Baszler was really good. She hit her in the midsection. You could see Baszler's posture break. She backed up. She took a few more low kicks and that was it. Like low kicks and body kicks are going to be really valuable for Nunes. And if she can start looking for Aldana to slip onto that head kick, that is definitely a finishing tactic that she's got. But she can also close the fight down and take her down to the floor. If she's able to get into a guard, we know she can land elbows that can cut her. And if she gets cut in the early rounds, a 25-minute fight really, really starts to work against you and you're bloody. If she passes, then again, she's working to crucifix. She's working elbows from side control like she did against Pena. And if you're turning away from her, she's looking to get, get on your back. She's looking to sink hooks in and, and get a rear naked choke. Or, or even not, she might just, just jump on your neck anyway. I mean, <clears throat> like... By the point she submitted Sarah McMahon, McMahon had been hit with a really, really clean right hand. Bang! Followed to the floor, hit her with a bunch of shots, finished her with the choke. Same thing with, with Misha Tate, who did everything she could to stay in that fight. Kept getting back up to her feet, but Nunes was just too strong, too physical, and kept finding those shots that kept putting her down. Again, Rinicky choke finish. And then the last finish that we've got on Nunes's record uh, was the... Um, reverse triangle armbar against uh, Megan Anderson. Same thing again. She wasn't even really on her back. She was standing over her at points at the end of that fight, just hitting her with big shots and uh, Megan Anderson not really having anywhere to do. Like It's not like Nunes is taking people down and dominating them with submissions. These submissions are coming when people have kind of had enough already. Like, just please get me out of here. And and Aldana's submission over Bechko here, you could say the same thing about it. Like, she'd bust Betch Cohea's nose. She caught her with a clean right hook. Cohea a close distance to try and take her down. And Aldana just stiff-armed her into the canvas. Circled around. Great footwork, as we always see from Aldana. And beat her up a few times before she... she and again, you know, she probably would have tried to finish with the rear naked choke had she not been falling off the side like Nunes was against, uh, against Megan Anderson. What haven't I thought about... So Aldana was was very much a clear a clear a, 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 a well rounded mixed martial artist early because she really kind of stepped into mixed martial arts as a thing in itself without having any of the you know Nunes was judo and then Brazilian jiu jitsu and you know she accumulated skills whereas Aldana went right this is the skill I need to learn to do this sport and she kind of started there and I think that's why her boxing's been so effective for mixed martial arts there was a lot of stuff that other people may have learned that she didn't spend time learning because she was trying to be very direct with her with her, her skill acquisition um so Nunes of course you know she's a she's a an excellent striker at range and when she's pressuring people um I do feel like Nunes has got a, a real big asset though being able to switch to Southpaw because I feel like that really does uh, it causes problems for Aldana. She tends to freeze up or kind of be railroaded into one particular game plan like she was against Holly Holm. And even if it's not working, she kind of can't break the cycle. There's more adaptability in Nunez's game. There, there, are, there are more more ways to finish, more areas where she can finish. But Aldana, the things that she does well, she does really well. And, and in the wild exchanges, even where Amanda Nunez might win slightly on the power exchange, she's always going to look less technical and more reckless than Arena Aldana in the boxing range. And if Aldana can start landing that body shot over and over again, that's going to really sap Amanda Nunez's energy. But it has to be an accumulation from Aldana. And in order to accumulate, she needs to be able to be fighting at the range that suits her. If if Nunez pushes forward, Aldana will get reckless and will get messy. And the one thing, I mentioned it on the Picks podcast, the one thing that Aldana likes to do when she's under pressure is she likes to spin attack. 
Uh, she does it against Puddy Lover up against the fence. She did it against Leslie Smith. We saw it in her earlier career. Just something that Nunez has got to be careful of. If she starts to get a bit overexcited and she's plowing in, landing big shots, she might feel like she, like the fight's within her reach and then run onto a, a, a spinning elbow of some sort. Who knows? It should be a really, really good fight, though, this one. I, I I appreciate very much Aldana's boxing skills for mixed martial arts, but the ferocity of Amanda Nunes um, and, and the way that she was able to regroup after losing a belt and go and get it straight away afterwards with a, a an entirely different performance to the, first, to the first fight against Pena. Very, very impressive. All right. Make sure you check out our sponsors, AG1 Athletic Greens. Go to athleticgreens.com forward slash outlawed and you will get... Uh, a year's free supply of D3 and K2, you'll get five free travel packs and all of the good stuff that you need to make your life better. Enjoy these fights at UFC 289. Give us a like and a subscribe. Check out the Picks podcast. Check out the war room for the main event, uh, for the co-main event. Oh, it's all there for you. And I'm going to be starting a live stream very soon. June, we'll be starting live streaming once a week. So I'm going to be talking to you guys and answering questions and asking you questions and maybe even doing some special prize draws and... Uh, and fun for correct predictions, which I'll never be winning, of course, as you guys know. Anyway, all right, enjoy the fight. See you next time.